Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, recently reinstalled Windows, Will Crosby, and joining me for episode 113 this week is all four members, well, all three other members of the Subpixel crew, uh, Ian Gibson. Wow. Wow, I can't believe it's all four of us. I can't believe it's episode 113. We did it, boys. We made it to the end. Kyle <laughs> Bailey. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's a rare occasion, but I, I feel like we should do something big to celebrate other than this episode. And Jake Terrio. I think that I arguably would have the least utility in a zombie apocalypse scenario of the four of us. For sure, for sure. I think I, tier I, ranking. I, I've got diabetes, so I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, that's true. Oh, <laughs> well, if my glass is broke. But in the apocalypse, insulin is free. You just have to find it. You can it. find it. Yeah. yeah. You just have to go to the, at war to the, with the sugar nation. I think, it only, I think a bottle of insulin only lasts like three years. So even mm. if I found oh. three years worth, I'd still be. But you can chug it all at once. Yeah, <laughs> that'd, that'd be fine. If I did that, that'd be fine. Oh, yeah. Your superpower. <laughs> Um, more insulin. <laughs> folks, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, The Last of Us TV show, HBO's The Last of Us, brought to you by Arby's. Um, we're going to be talking about this week, uh, try the new Arby's mushroom sandwich. Uh, first, though, we're going to start off here with a little precursor before we get into it. I should note that there are going to be heavy spoilers at some point. Uh, and I don't want to be the one to warn you. You should consult with a doctor. So do not listen to this uh, if you can't be spoiled, um, either the game or the show, because they're practically the same. Um, <clears throat> moving on, game experience. I'm going to go around the horn here, starting with Ian. Game experience with The Last of Us video games. I played the first 60 minutes of Last of Us on PS4, the PS4 remaster. Um, and I was decently spoiled as to the storylines of one and two, and that's pretty much it. What about you, Kyle? Uh, I got a PS3 from a friend that wasn't working. I fixed it, and the first game I got for it was probably about six months after The Last of Us came out was The Last of Us. Played it on that. I think I beat it like three or four times, um, and then I played it again when it was put out for the PS4, and that's probably the last time i've touched it i never played the second one <gasps> jake um i played uh maybe like the first two-ish hours on a friend's ps3 um and then watched a full playthrough of it um otherwise so i i myself have not actually myself played it fully all the way through and haven't touched two either but uh yeah can you hear the uh, I... Law and Order theme in the background? <laughs> dun, dun. I didn't. I wish. It's um, groovy. I, I played... I bought a PS3 a couple of years after the game came out. Then I played through The Last of Us. I didn't play through the remaster, but I did play through the second remaster uh, for work, uh, which sucked because I had to play it in 1080p on my PS5. It's awful. Gross. Why even okay. remaster it at that Why point? Why even... <laughs> indeed um <clears throat> okay now that we oh and i, I played most of two I, I never finished two um so i have no idea how it ends but i don't want to replay 14 hours to find out <laughs> um hot takes hot takes what are our hot takes we have a little stipulation here uh that i'm not gonna say what it is but see if people at home can figure it out does anyone have their hot take ready i haven't even thought of mine yet not with the caveat that was I, in the Google Doc. I I have come up with a caveat that is fruit based. Um, I don't know if it actually works, but I'll, I'll just I'll just go first unless Ian wants to go first or if, if Ian's. Ready. I mean, I've got mine. I've got mine locked and loaded. Um, right. I Ian, we're going to be describing just to give you a taste of our stances at the top before we go into detail. We're going to be describing our opinion of The Last of Us season one as a fruit. Um, and with a little bit of an explanation there. So I'm going to go with a Bosque pear because it's not very good looking and it's brown and ugly. It's a little thin at the top, but by the time you get to the, the bottom of it, you get some juice, you get some thickness there. 
Uh, Kyle, you want to go next? This is <laughs> this is the the show, right? Yes. OK, yes, just making show. sure. OK, um, my, I'm just going to go the, uh, straight up just just like uh, a watermelon, but one that has seeds in it. So it's mostly something that everyone likes. Um, it's really tasty. Um, but every once in a while you bite into it, you're like spitting a seed out. You'd be like, mm, I don't like that. I don't really I don't really care for that one. But very, very tiny little things that you can you can easily just get rid of. Um, Jake, I, I have mine if you'd like me to go. Yeah, I mean, I, I have one. I don't think it's very good, but I was going to say maybe it's like like a kiwi where it's got a lot of interesting texture on the outside, but it's not like my go to fruit. OK, OK. Mine uh, is a early picked ripened pineapple and that is because early picked ripened pineapples keep their acidity so by the time you finish eating this delicious pineapple you realize you burn your mouth and it really hurts <laughs> and it leaves a bad taste in your mouth mm. um which is how i feel about this show mm. okay that's it thank you guys that's so it. much for all right <laughs> bye oh i'm still reeling from the theme song not playing um <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we're going to go now <laughs> through the show. A second spoiler warning. I said I wasn't going to do it, but you're getting one for free. Um, we're going to start episode by episode. We're not going to super dive into every single episode, I don't think, but we'll at least uh, do it in season order here. Starting with episode numero uno, When You're Lost in the Darkness. Uh, this is the very first episode. 20 years after a fungal outbreak ravages the planet, survivors Joel and Tess are tasked with a mission that could change everything. I threw the IMDb uh, descriptions here just to give us a little refresher uh, before we go in. Uh, I'll open it up to the, the quorum here. Thoughts on the very first episode? Me. It's good. Yeah. It's was, it was good. It was well. It was well made. Uh, it stuck to the source material almost to a fault, and um, I I didn't think if you played the game, it wasn't a showcase of what the rest of the show was going to be like. It was more like akin to the Force Awakens, where it was like, "Hey, remember this? Like we're it's we're doing this. We're doing, we're doing this again. Know. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I could see that because because I I didn't know most of those beats. I mean, I knew the big ones. And I feel like the start of it was great. I mean, you got the characters of Joel, Tommy and Sarah, and it's like, great. I love this trio in the back of my head. I knew I'm like, oh, fuck, like, <laughs> you know, he's just gonna die pretty quickly. And then the, sh- the shit hit the fan segment was was very well done. And then after that, it was just like it, it, the rest of the episode was just very disappointing to me because like they introduced the QZ, but they just barely tease it. And you're like, no, 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 no. Let me live in here a little bit. Like give me an episode or two here because there's something really interesting going on. And then they keep introducing like really thin characters of like Marlene and like the security guard and the gang. But they're like super they They feel kind of superficial. And, and I'm just like, no, I'm not really feeling these characters and then um, they just keep talking about they keep like trying to force this MacGuffin of a truck battery. They're just like truck battery, truck battery. But for some reason, yeah. it wasn't landing. And I was just like, I understand it's important, but like, I'm not going to get fucking excited about a truck battery, people. <laughs> so it's like it was like a great start. And then it just kind of like hit this bottom plateau and just stayed there. And by the end of the episode, I was like, I got eight more fucking episodes of this to watch. I, I, I don't know. I felt a little disheartened by the end of it. I did. I think- oh, Ooh. go for it, Jake. Oh, I was just going to say, I thought the 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 teaser even before the Open title opening. sequence of like the the like the talk show, I thought that was an I mean, I liked it as a as a a tone setter and also them explaining away their changes to the the mechanics of the world. If that was something that people were going to get hung up on, which I know in the in the PR leading up to this, some people were hung up on. Mm. Um but um yeah i i liked the the fleshing out of that early part of the story um so that when we do get to the the you know the turning point where everything does start to pop, fall apart in the quaint distant year of 2003 <laughs> um i liked i mean i thought the the filmmaking was obviously very good and i don't know how much of that is um 
on the shoulders of Craig Mazin and how much of it is just, you know, HBO's dumping money into this and they're hiring people who can, you know, make a nice looking shot and, and, and block a scene pretty well. The show at several points, I think, does that really cool thing of focusing on a character in the foreground. Just something's something's out of focus yeah. in the background doing something that you're like, hmm, I don't like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, then it does, like Kyle was saying, it does just kind of follow the, at a certain point, it does just follow the beats of the early part of the game. It actually, um, I think that's also partly to the show's detriment. And this is, this is more of an overall complaint that I had with the, the, sh the, con the condensing of the story that the, that the TV show does. They, I, they had talked about, I think in one of the interviews of doing two seasons on the first game. And um, at the they very could. least, doing doing another episode, like it would be a full 10 episode order. Mm -hmm. And they didn't. They cut the 10th episode and condensed two of the episodes into one. And that, I think, actually hurts a lot of the world building that the game manages to do really effectively. And like Ian was saying in the QZ, like you spend like what is it, two hours a while. of the beginning of the game in the QZ. There's a lot more stuff with Marlene where like she has like actual like dialogue in in the show. I feel like she was there for like 30 seconds. <laughs> she she like was a, like, okay, go. Post-apocalyptic yeah. archety character archetype. Yeah. yeah. And not, and in yeah. the game, she's she's a lot more flat. She's not like she's a side character and she shows up at the beginning and the end. But like, I don't know. It, it just it that that part of the story being condensed um just kind of was like felt like a missed opportunity to me it was fine and obviously if you didn't play the game i think you got the pertinent information but at the same time for people who did play the game a lot of that is just left to like oh well you know about this but no one else does and no but to your know. point like like coming from that perspective as somebody who didn't play the game it felt very rushed and they were touching very briefly on a lot of stuff and i was like slow the fuck down here like you're yeah. you're passing by way too much good stuff here to focus on uh very thin characters like marlene um yeah. i'll just say i saw i saw a take on on twitter i wish i could remember who said it before i ever watched the show and they said the last of us feels like a very game a very good video game cutscene, but in live action and this episode really nailed that for me i think the it's other episodes that doesn't apply but this one especially all the stuff in the qz with marlene was just like this is like the quality and I don't want to say acting, but like the quality and like like the presentation level of a video game cutscene. You're just like, I'm not quite buying this. I'm not quite buying this as characters in a world, et cetera. And that was that was frustrating with how good the, the start of the episode was. Yeah. yeah, I think like everyone was saying, it was cool to see the recreations and like how well they can nail that. Um, I did. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I just read a chat message. Um, <laughs> uh, Zach Tech, sorry, this has to be in the episode. Wow. Now. Uh, my Thank brother you. says, you each look like different stages of a, a molester's YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, That's great. Halucha, tier list. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. Oof. Nope. Um, anyways. Uh, I can switch I glasses like... Like, if it's too distracting. <laughs> I did I did like that um they could explore that stuff. It was cool to see like them set the stage a little bit more than the game does. Um and the grandma the old lady in the background with her like mouth opening up was terrifying. Um and also they changed up a couple things like in the game you are they're sideswiped by a truck that like scares the crap out of you and in the show they changed it and had that plane crash so it was like a cool like flip for people who were waiting for it to happen. I agree with the QZ stuff. It was like you do the whole Robert stuff. You go and find him. You kill him. You meet Marlene. Then you go with Marlene to to the place where Ellie is like. So I feel Marlene, surprisingly enough, has pretty much the same amount of screen time in the game as cutscene wise. But gameplay wise, she's there for like an hour and she's to two hours. She's got expository dialogue during that time. Yeah, which exactly. Is, I think so it's why like, it feels different. Yeah. So I, I was, I didn't mind that they skipped the whole Robert narrative, Stop. but the, the, um, world building scenes during the Robert story arc in the QZ should have still been in the show, like meeting with people and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then what did this episode end with them leaving? It ends with they Ellie. Left. Uh, revealing that she's 
Is not that all in the first bitten. episode? They yeah. Yeah, they ends, come across the Joel, shootout. It, yeah, it ends with Joel beating the security guard, and then yeah, she's like, "I'm not." Blah, 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 blah. That's all like, the first episode. Yeah, I, that's crazy. I I had a I had a pretty big problem with how it ended, just just pacing wise, because it. I get that they wanted it to be a cliffhanger, and it literally ends on a building hanging on another building. Haha, <laughs> very funny. Um, but like the something about it just didn't sit right for me. Um, I don't, I don't know if I can inherently say why, but it just, it felt wrong. And I think that's actually a recurrent theme throughout the entire show, which is like, they made certain changes to, obviously, if it's episodic, it has to end. There has to be a smash to credits or, or fade to credits. And those changes, I think, interrupt the flow that the story in the game manages to avoid having issues with um and i think in the show it's just more apparent that it's like when you chop up a story like this where you can in a game stop wherever you want like yeah. stop at st no i think most people in a game will stop before an encounter or when a new level starts and there's like a chapter heading but you choose to do that and in in the tv show obviously it's it's clipped manually and i think it just hurts the pacing of the story yeah you don't stop at high points when you're playing a video game you stop yeah yeah, or you don't stop when you're ready for more. You stop when you're bored. Yeah. So like every Obviously episode that's stops inherent Pedro flaw. Pascal at an ammo bench. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fixing his weapons. Um, I yeah I I agree because like even that whole outside scene again they took the cut scene they put it onto the TV screen but they didn't include the like sneaking through pipes. There's other people out there. They're avoiding them because they know someone's escaped. So they're looking for them. So like, there's a little bit more story there. And I think they did a good job. Um, I like connecting. The, it was the guard who was buying drugs off of Joel. They like, gave him more. That was like, neat. Connection. Like they gave him more of a role. Yeah. It wasn't a random guy. Um, so that was helpful. But like, I feel like th of all the episodes, the very first episode was where they're like, Hey, we all want to get the cutscene to TV show out of our vein, like out of our systems. Let's just throw it all into the, as much as we can into this episode. So we don't feel like doing it the rest of the season, which they did continue to do, but not to like this sort of grandiose self aggrandizing level. Um, I, I actually think it's, it's, I, I, I think to a point, yes, but it's bookended because the final episode yes, is very yes, much yes, almost yes, yes. exactly <laughs> like like in the middle is where they kind of allowed themselves to get creative and then at the end they're like okay let's go back to the book or the game but yeah so speaking of the middle let's let's go to episode 2 you want to give the um the summary will uh yes episode 2 infected after escaping the QZ Joel and Tess clash over Ellie's fate while navigating the ruins of a long abandoned Boston wow guys i got to tell you this is the episode that almost made me stop watching the series completely. This wow. episode was just like real fucking bland, y'all. <laughs> and, and when they were trying to land shit, it was not landing. And at the end of it, I said, wow, I've got seven fucking more episodes of this. Uh, so let me let me give a little bit of context. To this number one, they're skulking through Boston, whatever. And Bye. every single Bye. every single fucking environment and setting they went into look fake as fuck like it looked like heavily cgi you should, you should like, see the like handcrafted and then like like just like video game ass world building and i was like i don't buy that as a real fucking location at all like every single every single setting that they went to and then uh not to jump ahead a little bit but the whole test death scene like that conversation did not make sense and then like her and joel's relationship did not feel earned at all so when she died, it was just like sucks for that. Like, let me let me just throw something down here. And I think, Kyle, this kind of leads to the point you had earlier about things feeling rushed. Throughout the series, they kept trying to rush to certain plot points, and it was like the characters were just spitting dialogue out to get to that conclusion as quickly as possible. And so in that whole like test death scene moment, there's this, you know, they they show up at the fireflies all the fireflies are dead. And Joel's like, OK, let's just go back to the QZ. And, and Tess is like, I don't want to go back to the QZ. And Ellie's like, oh, it's because you're infected. And it's just like, how did you get that fucking conclusion? Like, it just comes out of nowhere. And it's it's one of many moments in the series where it feels like they're just rushing dialogue to get to impactful story moments. But they haven't earned the impact 
yet. So I I, I actually agree. I, I I thought the second episode was was okay. I thought it was well done, but I do agree that that's again a problem. And I think again in the game you spend so much time going through Boston with Tess at your side, and like you go into that that um, the cracked topped over building yeah. um and there's a whole sequence where it's like you have to navigate through the 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 clickers you have to find your way up and out of the building she is you know uh, she leaves you at some point to like go check ahead and and you and ellie sort of talk a little bit about her um you just get so much more story from from the game and i i hate to keep returning to that against as, as a slight against the show but in the show it's so fast and it's it it's not earned her her the emotional impact of her death in the game, I feel like, is earned because of the time you spent. And she even says, and it's kind of funny because I, I actually think it's one of the the better lines in the game where she's looking at Joel and she's like, there's got to be enough here for, for me, for this to mean something. Like she's, she's actually gesturing mm -hmm. to him in the game and they have that line in the show. And I'm like, it doesn't feel like it right now. Like yeah. it just doesn't, yeah. it, those, those lines didn't connect the way they did in the game. And I, I think again, it's just the pacing. Uh, J Jake, did you, J or Jake or Will, did you, did you guys feel the same? Uh, no, I mean, I was just going to say, um, uh, you know, similarly, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you know, because you are the one who mentioned that they compressed two episodes together from a, from a, a 10 episode show order down to nine. And I would be interested to know if it was at the front or at the back, because I think we'll get to it, but the finale has a lot of pacing issues of its own. Um, it's also got 20 minutes of unused time that they just yeah, were like, no, that's we crazy. don't need this. <laughs> like, that's um, crazy. But um, yeah, the whole like, like Anna Torv from, uh, which, it's great. Uh, from Mind Hunter. You should all watch Mind Hunter. Yes. It's <laughs> um, you anybody? Yeah. yeah, she's, she's great. And when I didn't, or I had forgotten that she was Tess. So when she showed up, I was like, oh, that's neat. But yeah, there's, cause there's not, even in that first episode, they don't really do a whole lot to establish that like what exactly their relationship is. I think there's a scene yeah. where they wake up in bed together, but in the context, it's not like, is it a romantic thing or is she just yeah. staying there for that night? Yeah. Like what's, what's the story? <laughs> um, so yeah, then at the very end when she sacrifices herself and has this big valiant death, it's like, well, we, we don't, we don't really know who she was. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. She was, um, for all intents and purposes, she was female Joel. Yeah. Like, that's her, that's her role in the yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I had seen, I had seen a, a take on Twitter similar to Ian, and I can't remember who said it, so I'm sorry that I can't attribute it, saying that this whole show was just kind of what you see is what you get. Like, all the dialogue and all the scenes are just in service of advancing the plot forward rather than having any sort of, you know, subtext or deeper meaning behind them, which is fine at some level just to tell a story. But then, yeah, as you're sitting back and you're like, an episode happened. Yeah. <laughs> it happened. Okay, cool. It looked, it looked nice. The, you know, the creature effects were good. The dialogue, even though it's pretty utilitarian, it's, you know, it's people having conversation. Craig Mason's a good writer in that regard, just making people feel like people, even if we don't have a lot of time to sit with them. But um, yeah, I so just yeah. to just to push back on that point. So not not to disagree with you too much, Kyle, but I don't think the issue's pacing because episode two we had sixty fucking minutes of Joel and Tess, right? Like that is more than enough time to build a relationship there. And and I'll, I'll go on a little tangent and give you an example. So Maggie and I have been watching Game of Thrones and there's this episode in I think it's season five or season six uh, hard home where there's like this battle. And there is this there is this this background fucking character that you see for the first time. Then she has a couple lines. She slowly comes to the front. Then she has like a major subplot. Oh, yeah. And then I she's dead within about. like 15 yeah. minutes. And it's like. How the fuck did you build up that entire fucking character in like a 15 minute span out of like five lines and maybe 20 shots total? And and Tess and Joel had so much more than that. And there was like almost nothing built up to the character of Tess. Well, because it's so like it's, you said, it's all about the until they get to Ellie, it's all about the car battery MacGuffin. So all yeah. their dialogue is kind of about just like getting exactly, to yeah. back to Tommy. Yeah. It's not they're not like having conversation with or about each other it's all just about the things that they need to do 
Yeah. So, yeah, so I maybe maybe like, it's like, more just the writing overall. I mean, but I do. There are yeah. pacing issues, but maybe specifically with Tess, it's more just comes down to they gave her not great dialogue to establish her character as something someone yeah. we should inherently care about. I I I mean, it's funny because all these complaints for me completely go away in the next episode, and and, and the the it's like the the bad parts of the show up until this point are just gone and they're gone for an episode and then they come back in the fourth episode and, <laughs> it's probably and, because craig yeah. mason wasn't beholden to the plot points of the game yeah and i don't i don't able to I, do his own thing i don't, I don't yeah. want to skip ahead but uh before will uh well, introduces it so yeah, I w I just wanted to finally talk about episode two. Uh, but <laughs> what's your favorite? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, favorite episode. Uh, no, I just want to say y'all had beautiful points, and I agree. I, um, that in the game, they do a decent job at being at showing that Ellie is like, oh, that like Ellie is more comfortable with Tess than she is with Joel, and I don't think that comes across in the show. Like, you can yeah. see in the game that Ellie was like, oh, I would go with Tess, not with Joel. Like, if it were to continue further, like, she's the reason. And when she dies in the game, it's more of affecting both of them because Ellie wants, obviously, to go with the Fireflies and Joel doesn't want his on again, off again, whatever, <clears throat> to die. So it's impactful for both of them when in the show, it's just, like, sort of impactful for Joel and you don't think Ellie cares at all. So, like... And also, I think, I think the the um, I think Fedra killing her in the game is better than the zombies killing her in the show. I I also agree, and they really hammered home that point in the inside the episode. They were like, we we decided that having the infected kill her was a better idea than what we had originally done in the game. And I was like, what? Wait, wait a minute, pause, 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 pause. How does she die in the game? In the Give game, Fedra catches here. up with them and she shoots them out, defends them. She, she yeah, is I infected. Had forgotten that. She is infected, but she, she is still infected. Has yes, a, yes, yes, yes. She has a last yeah. stand moment, and and she kills a bunch of the soldiers, um, but then is because the, it was Fedra who killed all the fireflies, and then they were waiting for whoever was coming to meet. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Like okay, it, it's coming it was, back to me. Yeah. It like made a little bit more sense that way, but also yeah, it's about the same. But I also no no I, I agree it's about the same, but I feel like they only did the infected thing so they could have someone step on the tendril. And have yeah. all the infected come over, which which was um, which was never a problem again in the entire show, ever again. like ever. Entire yeah. show. They, they yeah. made such a big <laughs> such a big point of it. It'd be like these are all connected, and, and an infected <laughs> two miles away can feel someone's, and then they never did that again. It, even with the arcade, it was the noise of the arcade yeah. machine. It wasn't even the yeah. rumbling. So like, which what? is which is actually another problem I have with the the spores, and I'll I'll die on this hill. I think not having the spores was a bad idea because what are the what are the spores in the game there are sections where it, it's one of the methods of infection you can breathe in the spores um and it will get you infected or you can get bit and for me i, I know we're not supposed to say zombies or the infected or whatever um in the game having that as a method of viral transmission worked more more to the effect of making the infected in the game feel more unique from other types of zombies and other um uh, entertainment uh, uh, pieces and not having that in the show because they were like, well, if there were spores, they wouldn't be contained to one area. And I was like, you could write it so that it doesn't happen that way. You could write yeah. it so that the, the spores only last an hour or whatever before they, they die in the air or something like that. Um, and it, in the game, it allows for a lot of claustrophobic, really, you know, uh, very uh, heart racing, dark shadowy moments of of stealth and and yeah your characters are wearing gas masks except for ellie uh but it it creates more more of a unique situation to put your characters in that the tv show completely ignores um yeah. and it, it's immediately after episode two in the show but immediately after that section in the game ellie and joel have to go under like through the subway station in boston to get out of boston and that's how they get out when the show they just cut and they're they're, they're 10 miles outside of Boston, which looks like oh, yeah. upstate New York or something like that. But yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, moving on. Episode 3, long, long time. When an unknown person approaches his compound, survivalist Bill forces an unlikely connection. Later, Joel and Ellie seek Bill's guidance. Um, so this episode actually starts off with Joel and Ellie, which uh, I, kind of I forgot every single time. Yeah, it's not great. They go to the, they go to Cumberland Farms. I mean, who doesn't want to go to Cumberland? Yeah, they, they go, yeah. <laughs> Go to Cumberland Farms, looking for the stash. She finds tampons, kills a clicker infected. She, she tortures a clicker. She's just like, <laughs> yeah, she, it's honestly, I, I hated that moment because it took like three or four episodes for me to gain back a like of Ellie because I'm like, who's this creepy fucking Reddit kid? Who's yeah, like, <laughs> pulling wings off tortured. of flies. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Um, especially, especially because earlier... I, I think it's earlier. They discuss not knowing whether or not the people who are infected are still like aware of what's happening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like they yeah, discuss that as a plot point. And I'm like, so you're basically stabbing like this guy with a knife and he may possibly still be aware of his consciousness. Well, and also yeah. I, my, my problem with that specific moment was what we said about the last episode is that they're like, Oh, you know, they're all connected. And I was like, why is she like cutting into one? Somebody's going to know somebody's <laughs> going to come for them. But yeah, you know, they never did. I, um, I also liked, they confirmed the, the whole flower transmission theory, uh, which is kind of cool. Like fans had been thinking that was how it happened. It was in your cornflakes. Um, yeah, and also, like, Winkies. he hadn't bought a cake that day, which is why they didn't, it, it, whether they would have been infected or not, that was, like, a long run. Well, yeah, and they like, show the, the, the other family making cookies, but Sarah yeah. doesn't eat any of them. The unrealistic yeah. thing for me for that is, like, you would think that somewhere along the line of the the apocalypse happening, it would take them, like, a year to figure that out. Like people would still be eating stuff off of shelves and and you know going yeah. to groceries and like even more people get infected, which I'm sure would happen. But it's just like I don't know. Like I like that. <laughs> I like that as a method of transmission. It's very cool, and I really like what they did in was it um, Indonesia uh, where they where they oh yeah in, where they the beginning that, of episode yeah. two that part was great. Like I love that part. I don't, I don't know. There was something about that in the first episode one where it just felt a little bit fake like i couldn't i couldn't buy it as like i'm watching something real again it felt a bit too handcrafted and then the fact that they just completely fucking dropped it i that it, too, it just got to the point where me. i was like i was like okay you got to commit or not and they didn't and so then it well, just becomes unnecessary and i'm like i thought they were gonna <sighs> do that at the beginning of every episode until it caught yeah. up with the doctor yeah. in the last episode like that yeah. would have been a great way to show how all of this knowledge well, know traveled to the a fireflies. really good a like, really yeah. good through line yeah the yeah, season um, like, the expanse does that pretty well where they have like yes. the teaser before the title credit is a section from one of the novellas that's building and yeah. building and building to a story beat we won't get to because is it the, the engine invention one? Sure. huh no is it the engine invention that one no that that's no, a that that short story no it's it's all the it's oh, the it's folks here, so. the the separatists who are sorry we're talking planet. about the expanse now oh, okay, okay. <laughs> on, this yeah, is not about the planets no no we're talking ship up in orbit and it's yeah. the the girl who finds like the dead bird, and then she the things uh, bring it back to life, and then her like brother the blue, dies. The blue tendrils yeah. thing, right? Yeah, right? I, yeah. Need the to, I, never, I need to finish those books and then watch the show. I need They're to finish good. the um, first season. Anyways, uh, long, long time. Episode three. Uh, call it an episode because boy howdy, it is. Um, this is the first huge deviation from the game. Uh, starring good old Bill, who is in the game, but not any of the Bill sections from the game. Um, it's the first good episode. H Holy shit, was, they made a good episode. It was so good. It was really good. It was a good episode. I I, I cried during it um, a lot. Um, I really yeah. wanted to It land. wasn't all sad. <laughs> why, why, why were you crying the whole time? No, why at the end I cried. Well, I was first crying because I couldn't believe they were shoving more gay people into my, my media. But yeah. You're crying for America. Okay. That's really yeah. annoying. Yeah. <laughs> crying for... My favorite part about that is if anyone complained, he's gay in the game too. Yeah. So, like, I was like, at least they can't complain about that. Uh, no, I thought it was a beautiful, lovely episode showing... Instead of showing the side of bill in the game where he's crate a little bit crazy locking down his huge town setting up traps everywhere angry at everyone it showed the kind hearted side of him uh saving murray murray is that his name frank 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 murray is the actor yes uh, murray 
something from, uh, from uh, White Lotus. Amen. White Lotus, yes. Uh, Frank saving Frank their life together, showing Joel and Tess coming over because I mean that's the same from the game, uh, all that sort of stuff, and building up to a, an end that was incredible, I think, and also completely threw anyone who knew the game out the window like because you just didn't know what like the first two episodes you kind of knew what was happening and then this episode you're like what i don't know what's gonna happen uh and i just thought it was so good it honestly made me wish and this is maybe this was like a one-off thought that i had that wouldn't actually work but it made me wish this was more like an anthology series where like mm-hmm. every episode was just like same little, little story, story here, here my little story yeah. here little story here and i was like this is such a great world to set things in because you can have those idyllic it's a love story the the third episode is a love story it's it's a meat cute um by way of in a pit trap <laughs> yeah by way of zombie trap or, yeah meat cute apoc yeah it's go, his we'll excitement all go on, uh, when he realizes the world has ended and he can go to like a home depot yeah. oh my god was, Every, well, was and so he good. has he has the he has the don't tread on me flag in like his basement and i was yeah, like yeah. i live next door to this person um <laughs> yeah. and uh I, um, yeah was, to, to, was, to your point about the anthology series i i i, I literally wrote that down like i i think it could work really well as an anthology I don't think it should be an anthology. And I think what what we're both really trying to say is like there are characters in this show and stories that are incredibly well told, yeah. but they are only in the single packaged episodes. Like when they are trying to tell Joel and Ellie and other characters across multiple episodes, like more than two or three episodes, it doesn't really fucking work. And it's like it's it's weird. They are capable of telling great characters and great stories, but only on a micro scale on a macro scale. It just doesn't really work and that's that's the frustrating part and credit credit where credit's due i mean craig mazin is i think he's really showing his his writing chops with episode three and he he took a morsel of something that neil Druckmann had come up with and was like hold up like there's more to what you wrote here than what you actually wrote let's expand on this and um yeah i i mean it's just a great it's a great piece of entertainment and it stands on its own. Um, I think high above a lot of the other episodes in, in the show and it, it's everyone's already sung its praises. I've sung its praises on Twitter. I think it's really well shot. It's very sweet. There's a lot of really good yep. through points in, in that episode alone with um, the music, with the character growth that's shown. And honestly, they do a really good job of showing time progression uh, very, very simply, yep. it's it's honestly what they do in that episode is not that complicated. It's just done mm. really well. Uh, and it's just great to see it, obviously, focusing on gay characters and specifically older gay characters who don't fall into the kill your gays trope. They do die, but it's of their own volition at the end. Spoilers. Uh, and and they they've both lived a good full life in the middle of this infected apocalypse. And it's a beautiful, beautiful episode. Yeah. Um, I also really liked. Um, oh, I completely lost the thought. Never mind. I don't like Linda, Linda Ronstadt. It's, it's out of here. <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> kids listening to Linda Ronstadt now. Um, <laughs> yeah, literally. You know, I, I think you know, echoing everything that's already been said, and that this was kind of like one. One of I think the best things about The Last of Us, or it would like I, maybe it was Neil Druckmann who came up with it or not, but just the name the last of us is such an evocative title um that this was the first episode where it's kind of like okay we're 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 cashing that check here's here's us here's yeah here's the last of us let's tell a story about you know people at the end and it is Mm -hmm. you know this very compelling little you know not would you call it a bottle episode it kind of is yeah it's it's about it's a vignette if you want to call it something Um, else but yeah but yeah, just this, you know, this heartfelt, you know, it's two people at the end of the world. And that's, you know, how, what, what do they, what do they do? How do they, how do they get through that? To get. Um, what I was going to say is this is the episode uh, before the show aired at work that everyone's like, do you see, did you get a chance to watch episode three yet? <laughs> like, isn't it, dis- isn't it disgusting? Like, how could they? Yeah. <laughs> can you believe <laughs> they did that? We're going to write something against this. Yeah. Um, GameStop yeah, is my boss very Shapiro, homophobic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, GameStop. that's what you work for now. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I changed jobs. No, uh, but at work, like everyone was like, "Oh, like you watch, you gotta go watch this." Like it's the blah blah. Because blah. at that point, I think pre like press only had access to the first three, so it's yeah. just like 
it, it hit hit so well there. Um, and then I think the ending with the window shot was great. Great callback to the the main main, main uh, menu. Yeah, main menu yeah. of the game. Uh, they I believe they said they were going to do that for every single episode. Like originally when they were planning it out, like wouldn't it be cool to do this? Uh, and they scrapped it because. I don't they're not smart enough. Yeah, yeah, they're smart enough to scrap that. But they kept it with this because it it made thematic sense. And I love that they left the window open for the smell and like to decompose and everything. Yeah. It's just yeah. so funny. It's just like so thoughtful. Like I should probably prop the window open if we're gonna kill ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to ruin the drapes. Um okay. Episode three done. Episode four. Please hold to my hand. Uh after Ten, abandoning the right, did you type that in wrong? I checked on IMDb and Wikipedia. That is the name of the episode. No, Please hold to that my can't hand. Be right. I don't Isn't know it, if it's, it's like a song hold song on to my hand. I can't remember. Check the HBO app. Yeah, go on. Like, HBO. What is it? Yeah. Maybe oh, I could check HBO. After abandoning their truck in Kansas City, Joel and Ellie attempt to escape without drawing the attention of a vindictive rebel leader. Man, this episode uh, Mon is... <laughs> this was a this snoozer. Episode... I did not this... like this episode. It, this, this is kind of a mixed bag for me. It felt like it had a lot of potential, and I was clinging to that potential, but the execution was not that great. And, and what I mean by that was, um, I think the gunfight, the the ambush, etc., was really well shot and well done. Yes, and I intense. I think I think they keep teasing some fantastic political like ethical moral drama between Fedra, the fireflies, the people abuses of power, uh, rebellions, etc. They just don't flush that out at all, it, which is so really a shame. Yeah. And then Kathleen is like, okay, who's this villain? And it turns out she's a fucking cartoon character. She's just stupid. I'm this sorry. Is in a, a neat anthology episode of yes, seeing, yes, seeing, you exactly. know, neighbors ratting out their neighbors to yes. the feds and then leading to the revolution and then all the, you know, yeah. whatever follows that. But yeah, this was a, this was a snoozer. I think it's, it's funny because the, I think unintentionally, obviously they went into this episode with, hopes of getting people uh, not necessarily attached to the antagonist of this episode or, and the next two, this episode and the next episode, but you come in as Joel and Ellie and you leave as Joel and Ellie who are like, I don't care who these fucking people are. <laughs> like, yeah. We're just going to leave. Like who cares? And it's like, yeah, okay. Kansas city is gone. Like the, the QZ is, is gone. Um, and they show it, but there's no again, there's no emotional attachment to anything, even even like a, a like a logical sort of thoughtful um, flashback, I think, could have really helped. Even things yeah. out. Other, other, I just I, I like that. I love Melanie Linsky. She's great. Go go see. Uh, what is it? I don't want to live. I don't want to be alive Farther. in this world anymore. I can't remember. <sighs> she's she's really great. It's with Elijah Wood. It's it's a great movie. Um, but like her character's so just one note dumb like she's stupid yeah. <laughs> she's a stupid character and i'm sorry but like it's just it didn't land for me and, and until I thought looking it... at the google doc i actually thought the events that that end with the you know all the things coming out of the ground i thought that was one episode and then i looked at the no. google doc and i'm like wait that was two episodes yeah <laughs> yeah they stretched out stuff that didn't need to be yeah. stretched out and compressed stuff that should have had time to breathe yeah because yeah. i didn't mean to jump ahead but in the next episode episode five they try and redeem kathleen there's a scene where they're like maybe explain yourself a little bit give us a little bit of motivation and you almost get there and then she turns back into like just a, an unapologetic asshole and you're just like well there goes any sympathy or empathy I'm at all shoot you just attempted kid. to build yeah yeah, yeah. And it's just like it's just, I, it's just such a great idea in this episode and i have to give him credit for that it was just not a good execution whereas some of the earlier episodes didn't even have a great idea there necessarily. So that's why, like, I don't think this is the worst episode, but it was definitely like, give me something. And they tried to, but they didn't. But blasting that doctor in the little jail cell. Good execution. Sure. That's just like, yeah, oh, but, you can, shot him too. but you can see, you I can see it. Coming. I didn't know she yeah, was a villain until she shot the an unarmed uh, guy. <laughs> I didn't know. Well, I think I'm that's what they, they were. That. I think that's what they were going for because Melanie Linsky is not a villainous type of actor. <laughs> so they were like, we're going to cast the least likely person from an actor's perspective to play this villainous character who's not in the game. <sighs> she, like she's not in the game. No, none of this oh, is in the game. Not. Um, no, that no. makes it even worse because it feels like her for her character. They were just like, what if it's a 
Karen. What if the Karen is the villain of the episode? What if she's a NIMBY? Like, <laughs> this is also... Like, Fuck. This is all in Pittsburgh in the game is where the yes. crash is. And they're just hunters. They're not... They're not, um like people who revolted like the the you actually get it in a later episode because david says he's from the pittsburgh qz but the pittsburgh qz mm -hmm. actually failed and so there were just hunters around there in, in the game and then in this one it's like the, the rebellion had just happened so also these guys are just cooler crap. like that's cool. the other thing that didn't make sense to me is because why would this trap system be there if it hadn't been taken over by crazy people you know like they didn't have enough time to set all that up um I will the timing the timing was one of those things where it's like I'll okay it's a TV it. show I'll allow yeah, you time. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But yeah, it, yeah. it was just like why would I, like they have so much to deal with. I didn't think their rebellion would be caring about people trying to drive through as fast as possible in a car, you know, but out of town. Yeah. 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 Out of I, out of town is Ian Ian touched on a little bit, but that the shootout at the very beginning of the episode is really well done and it, mm -hmm. it establishes yeah. Ellie as it's it's you know she kills someone um to, to save joel and i know a friend of mine was waiting for the shot where joel smashes the guy's throat down onto the jagged piece of glass and they didn't have it and i was like well but they substituted it with a with a really strong character moment so mm -hmm. you gotta be yeah. you gotta be happy about that but another thing uh which i thought was really cool and i've been to kansas city a couple times and i never knew this there actually is a intense tunnel system underground kansas city and um, it's pretty big, it's like, like Disney World. really big, like miles and miles and miles. Uh, and I was looking it up. You can take tours. There's like a there's like a pub or like a bar down there. It's really cool. So that part of the show actually can could happen. I guess technically somehow you could figure out a way to corral the infected into those tunnels or whatever and just leave them down there. On the flip side, the <laughs> the incredible convenience of having the tunnel fall into itself and spew out all these infected in the next episode was like so eye yeah. rolly like oh my god yeah. like this is so yeah. stupid that they're that they're doing this like a big movie I, moment like, yeah i feel like they should have been like like i realized they were trying to be subtle about it but i feel like they could have set that up better where they had to get through the spot where they corralled all the zombies to so yeah. like you knew the danger going in and then it was a kind of a surprise where the zombies turn around and attacked all the Kathleen people. Well, because that kind of would have played a little bit better. They sort of have that moment. I can't remember if it's in this episode or the previous one of um, big yeah. gruff uh, bodyguard guy leads Kathleen into like a basement and you can yeah, tell yeah. like it's some things episode. amiss with it, but they, yeah. they don't really talk about it in enough of a way that the viewer is like, Oh, the, infected being under the city is compromising some of the structural integrity of these buildings they, they only reference it once yeah it's and just normally you time. have to reference something three times for it to stick yeah, with an audience they don't and, they and don't then, yeah, yeah. Re they don't repeat it so when you get to that moment like just right now is when i remembered that <laughs> i didn't yeah. remember it at the time <laughs> watching the show and, and I, I did also, like you gotta, her you, you gotta establish timing or trigger in some way like why mm -hmm. did they pop up in that neighborhood at that moment is it because mm -hmm. of noise etc yeah. etc cetera, et cetera? true uh her number two is jeffrey pierce the voice actor for tommy oh, for tommy yeah he's, he's a great uh, job he's a good game. character actor too yeah he was great not beard. obvious like some other <laughs> voice actors in the show <laughs> um but huh. uh his was nice just because i had never i didn't rec i didn't know until after the episode aired mm -hmm. that it was him uh yeah. can, can we can we can we talk about yeah, just, five. just just to yeah, well, yeah, yeah we, we, five. We, we, we just have to bring up um, Sam and Henry and the changes that they made, which are revealed in the next episode. But I just want to bring up the fact that that's the cliffhanger that episode four ends on is is they're being held up by these two random yeah. characters who if you play the game, you know who they are. If you don't, you're like, who are these guys? Episode five. Yes. Episode five. Endure and survive. Uh, while attempting to evade the rebels, Joel and Ellie cross paths with the most wanted man in Kansas City. Kathleen, Kathleen continues her hunt uh, for them. Great app. Great app. Well, besides aside, the aside, we talked about, aside but, from the stuff we already talked about, I thought it was a really good episode. Yeah. Great app. Anthology series. Yep. Forget Last of Us Part Two. Fuck it. Just do an anthology series from now on. Honestly, <laughs> the uh, the ending pretty brutal. Yep. Yeah. Again, uh, cha changed from the game. What they, happened in the game? In in the game, Ellie just wakes up to Hen uh, Sam attacking her. 
Um, no, in no, sh- in the game, she go she goes and gets him. Or you know, that's what I mean. Yeah, she, yeah, they yeah. Wake yeah, yeah, up and yeah. she goes to yeah, yeah, yeah. Way. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, but in the show, obviously, she if from like a child's a teenager's perspective on how medicine and and viruses work, it kind of makes sense that she'd be like. I'm immune. Here's some of my blood. Like, I don't know what to do in this situation. Maybe this will help. And I kind of thought, like, that's probably how someone who has no prior experience with with medical devices or terminology or how any of that stuff works would think maybe this will help. You know, this is the one thing I can do. So I thought that was a really unique change. But also the bigger change that they made uh, was making um, Sam uh, deaf and and. Uh, the they ha- I know they had an ASL translator, which is a really fucking cool job um, to have as as a person on set. And the kid who played Sam was phenomenal. He was so good, so much emotion in just in just his facial expressions. But then Hen- the the actor who played Henry too also did a really good job. Their bond as yeah. brothers, I think, is really apparent. And props to the casting directors for those two because they they nailed it. And throughout the entire episode, it was it was great. Yeah, yeah, I thought they did phenomenal. I was, and this talk about uh, cutting things from the game. I think this whole their whole storyline worked without the like them running away in the bridge and them jumping off the bridge and going through the sewers and all that sort of stuff that happens. I think it, it worked fine in the game. Like you wouldn't think anything of it, but it not being in the show, I think worked in its favor. Where it's like you didn't you didn't need to spend time doing that doing that, and they didn't. Uh, so it, it, their story was still pretty complete there. Uh, that was really that liked. was that part in the game where they go into like the it's like a water treatment facility or something and there's like there was like a group of people living there yep that's okay. all I, I, it's the same as the they show cu- ish, they cut ish all that Danny. or well you, not not all of it it's in the tunnels in the in the, yeah you you learn more about that that pick that crayon drawing of our protectors is is from the game the the soccer uh thing is in the game all that stuff's in the game uh yeah and, and you know way more about that because you're reading ish's letters as you're walking through that area and he yeah. like he was on a tugboat he he beached the tugboat went into the sewers met some other people all this sort of stuff um and i i don't think it, they have it in the show but the best part about that in the game is when they leave those sewers they break the door open close the door <laughs> And the door that they exit from says, do not open dead, (laughs) dead inside or whatever. Not the walking dead. Do not dead. It's just so funny that they just, they're like, why didn't they write this on the other side? (laughs) Um, Which is great. Um, Any more thoughts on episode five from anyone? It's great. Great. Good stuff. Moving on to episode number six. Kin, after ignoring the advice of locals, Joel and Ellie descend deeper into dangerous territories in search of the fireflies and Tommy. I think that guy's in Snow Dogs. What'd you say? I think that guy at the beginning who comes home and finds that Joel is holding his wife hostage, I think he's in Snow Dogs. Oh, oh, I can see the Cuba that. Gooding oh, that Jr. That movie. That scene was, was so, so good. great. They were great. I loved it. They were fantastic. It. That was a great opener. Yeah. I, this, this just kept solidifying the feeling of like the Joel and Ellie storyline, I could maybe give half a fuck about. It's but the least every, interesting part. Yeah. Almost every other side character in the storyline they introduced, I'm like, I'm fucking in. Give yeah. them a spinoff. <laughs> yeah. like, you know? well, like, because <laughs> the way that they did it in in the the Bill and Frank episode that I think was such a good device is we have like the little bit at the beginning, but then there's whatever the moment is where there's, you know, an item or a landmark or something that then flips to the flashback. And I think mm-hmm. if they had wanted to do an anthology thing, but still include the Joel and Ellie stuff, they could have done that where Joel and Ellie just bookend mm-hmm. every episode. So we're still kind yeah, of getting, drop if you wanted to, if you wanted to, <laughs> it's just funny because not, not to go down this tangent too much, but a lot of people were complaining where they're just like any fucking episode that doesn't have Joel and Ellie for the majority of it is a filler episode. And I'm like, those are the only good fucking episodes because yeah. the Joel and Ellie story is not working out because if Ellie, if there wasn't the apocalypse, Ellie would be one of those kids who's like shouting Reddit memes in the middle of a shopping mall. And Joel's just a <laughs> weird fucking person who can't handle grief. And it's just like, it's not a good story. <laughs> and it's just like Shapiro on the show. Yeah. Uh, that but was, anyways, that was his point. <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, um, episode six, I, I think this was a really nice palate cleanser 
because I was struggling with this show because even when I was enjoying it, it's still very, very dark and depressing. Um, and so it was nice to see what success and survival looks like post pandemic. Uh, lots of cool, like new characters and a cool new setting introduced. And I think what it, what it really gave for me was uh, after I just shit talked Joel and Ellie for a while is that it did start to give some background building for Joel. I don't think it was incredibly well done, but it raised up that thing of like, hey, Joel was basically one of these fucking raiders for a while and was like doing some bad fucking shit. And he may act like he's good now, but he may still have that in him. And uh, that's that's something that I don't think they developed well enough, but that really comes back in the last episode and finally gives the main characters an interesting subtext to deal with. And so I appreciated episode six kind of started to plant some seeds there that sprout later. The, the stuff with him and Tommy obviously is it reveals Gabriel a lot Luna about their past. Good. He is very Agents of Shields ghostwriter. Oh, someone watched that show. Oh. That's crazy. Oh, that's a, a wiki. Wait, <laughs> that's, uh, I'm sorry. I heard that as as like the ghost writer of Agent of Shield. Oh, and ghost was, writer. Was writer. <laughs> as like how, made a like, deal a with writer? the devil to get himself into he the writer's writing room. The, he was writing the show and they weren't giving him credit. What? <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry, Kyle. Go, yeah. go ahead. No, no, no. The the stuff the stuff with Joel and Tommy I think is very good because it reveals a lot of stuff. But then also the parallels to that is the stuff with Ellie and Tommy's wife where they're kind yeah. of talking and and it there there's the the duality of those scenes i think go hand in hand really well and you learn about um some of some of tommy's past uh, a little bit which i i wish there was more tommy because he is a really mm -hmm. interesting character yeah. and i thought the same thing in the game where i was like i just i i kind of wish one of the deal if they had had more than one dlc that it was like a a brother like team up kind of dlc thing i thought that would have been really cool set like at the beginning of the apocalypse. But anyway, um, I, I really like this episode again, like you said, Ian, it's showing what success looks like and, and what people coming together and not being fucking crazy cannibals or raiders or anything and being logical and thoughtful about, Hey, if we're going to survive here, we need more people. And if we need more people, we need more, uh, facilities and, and buildings and, and all structure and stuff like that. And it was, it was just really well done. Um, I liked that they were watching, I can't remember what movie it is that they're watching, but it was very inappropriate for kids. I do know Goodbye, that. Goodbye, girl. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if you want to be showing like little eight-year-olds this movie, but um, Did, yeah, I, I, I like this episode. I forget if it's in the games or not, but they were introduced, I think, in this episode that Joel's having like panic attacks or something. Yeah. It's, where the, it's where that meme came from. Yeah, um, but it, just, like, it, it, like, it didn't pay it, off. They're I just don't trying think. to show him getting old. Like yeah. that's his decision to, but, to, but again, well, no, that whole thing is his decision to tell Tommy to take her the rest of the way. Like, cause he's that like, didn't play chest. for me. It, so I, didn't I, get I, I, I just thought it was a, yet another thing that they were like, this is going to be a problem for him for one episode. He's been oh, dealing with it. I, we just haven't been showing it. <laughs> I, I didn't see it as him getting old. Granted, it was very poorly done, so I don't think there's a correct answer here. But I was seeing it as their poor manifestation of him being like, oh, shit, I'm starting to care for this girl and it's bringing back grief. And I don't know that I can keep her safe. Like it, it like but totally agree. It is something that they shoved in there. They didn't well explain. And then they just dropped it. But it, we got a like meme they, out of it. So, yeah, like, like they kept trying to to add depth and uh, to Joel, but they didn't know how to express it. And it comes out as all these weird little things that Joel does throughout the series and then drops. And it was just like, so, so there is um, to do a hard turn here. Uh, I mentioned it earlier at the end of episode two about there's a dialogue moment that just feels completely fucking goofed and doesn't make sense. There's a moment in episode six as well that unless I missed something didn't make any fucking sense at all either. Well, it, it made a little bit of sense, but it was a big stretch, which was Ellie's watching the movie and Joel is having the conversation with Tommy. And then Ellie leaves the movie and walks down the street. Joel has the conversation with Tommy and then Joel comes back and Ellie's like, I heard everything. I, I was there. I heard enough to know you want to leave me. And I was oh, like, yeah, that you was a little you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't do one fucking shot of her yeah. at a door yeah, with her ear to the through, crack through the and window. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and like part of it, I think Kyle's been talking about pacing, but I think the other part of it is like they didn't know how to like connect the dots enough to actually make a viewer understand how they went A, B, C, D. They just well, kind of went A, C, D, F. And it is, was like, is that in the game? 
that specific I that specific part. I don't care. Them. Uh, so them arguing is in the, so in the game they don't go to Jackson. In the game they they're only at the hydroelectric plant. Right. Joel confronts right. Tommy. I don't remember them showing Ellie hearing it, but that, she that's runs away to the ranch. That's what I meant. Was yeah. Um, was that and they in the meet game her there? But and yeah, it's the ranch and all that, and then they peel off before to- they even get back to Jackson for Colorado. So it was. I did think it was. It was the right decision to show Jackson in this. Like it was cool to see yeah. that all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I agree with you because I, I was editing a video for it, and I was trying to line up. We were doing cutscene stuff, and I was trying to line it up, and I was like, "Wait, it just goes from her walking the, down the <laughs> yes. street." He's like, he's like, how much did you hear or something? Yeah. She's like, like, all of it. Like, I'm like, the what the fuck? You, like, when? you weren't there. You weren't uh, there. When? Yeah, you're at the yeah, movies. Exactly. Um, <laughs> idiot. Yeah. Watch Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a struggling Broadway actor. Um, I know way too much about that movie now. Uh, moving on. Next episode. Good. We're good. Next. Yeah. Next episode. Yeah. Next episode. Uh, as uh, left behind. As Joel fights to survive, Ellie looks back on the night that changed everything, folks. The other flashback episode. I they hate did it this again. episode. Another great up. Another great up. There, there's suspension of disbelief in here, but as long as you suspend that, great character building. Holy shit! They, they were seven episodes into the first season, and they finally built up one of the main fucking characters. <laughs> it's I, like, cool. I, I actually thought this was just like okay. Like it I was, think it was too it was long. Just this is the worst. Right. I enjoyed it as a character. Building. It was long. It was long. Yeah. yeah. And we it get was... another uh, uh, character from the Expanse in like the the like the drill sergeant or whatever Ellie's yeah. drill sergeant at school, who seemed like a, a pretty a pretty. He was like very clear cut yeah. with like, look, if you're an officer, shit's good. Like be an officer. I was like, I can appreciate the clarity on this. Like this is he's, I, I he's, think he's not lying. This is a thing. The game, this is the DLC of the video game left behind this whole episode. The DLC for the video game does a way better job than this episode. And they're about the same length. Um, Playtime. I think the per- the person who plays Riley in the video game is a much better actor. Uh, and then the the story beats are a lot better. And it makes a lot more sense in the DLC because L- the DLC takes place in a mall with Joel, not in a house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's going through a mall, and when she goes to the specific stores, she's remembering the oh, okay. her that is her like trigger, her friend, like trigger, her other trigger friend things. got or bit, yeah, her friend got bit. So like yeah. that stuff, I think made a lot more sense, and I, and I really like that a lot better. But also, I really thought she wasn't a good actress, and it threw me Ooh, off the she, entire so she, Bella? She, yeah she's in uh, um, she's good the she's new good. wakanda i, I think um, she's probably a good actress there. but the the girl in the dlc i think was way better yeah i and, i agree what's the what's the dlc called again left behind yeah no that's something different no it's kirk cameron i hate kirk you cameron. so much <laughs> uh, kirk uh, cameron's left behind I, DLC. I, just, just to say i hear you i don't think this is a perfect episode i think i just really like this because the whole time I didn't like Ellie. I was going between like passive mm. indifference to hatred because she's just kind of an annoying, creepy character. And I, this was like a revelation where I was like, f- I was like, finally, I can empathize with one of the main fucking characters, you know? And, and I appreciated that. And I think it also gave some context on Fedra, you know, going all the way back to episode four, where it's like, I want to know more about Fedra fireflies, rebels beef, right? I want that world building. And this gave me a little bit of world building on the Fedra side. Um, I w I will say the ending to this episode feels cut off because even though you kind of can guess what's going to happen, it, it just ends. It is more just like, I was like, like they, he talks about it. And I think the the last, yeah, Yeah. that's the reason they cut it off. But also in the game, you have finished the game and now you're playing left behind. So it makes a little bit more sense because you already know what's going to happen. Where in the show, it tried to pull that off and I, and it didn't quite work no. out as well. It's like show it. Like you know Me, what's coming. It's a very emotional moment, and they just cut it short. And it's like, no, just deliver on it. Okay. I'll, I'll it's, say, it's like it's like if they ended Bill and Frank before they killed themselves and they just discovered the letter. And then it's like, 
no, let us live in that emotional fucking moment. You spent the whole episode building to it and they just cut it. Yeah, especially because it's not like they're both going to go crazy. Like, I, w- I would love to see the emotional roller coaster of Ellie realizing she's immune. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, why, like, why? Why am I still here? Like questioning everything. I dig that. Um, I will say as a plus for this episode, production design. Fantastic. Like, great. Yeah. Amazing. It looked really, really good. Um, those they just went to a work. mall and didn't change what, anything. What? Yeah, they basically just trashed them all for what a weekend or something. Um, uh, those arcade <laughs> machines would not work. They would not work. Those arcade <laughs> machines would not work. I'm sorry. I don't it's think like any of the It's like Tron, Tron Legacy. It's like Tron Legacy. Be fine. It goes into the classic. Years? Let's talk about Tron. Let's, let's talk about Tron Legacy again. <laughs> oh, I just don't think. I don't think. Well, anyways, uh, next episode we're good. Yeah, 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 we're good. Sure. Episode number nine. When we are in need, Ellie crosses paths with a vengeful group of survivors and draws the attention of its leader. A weakened Joel faces a new threat. This sorry, episode, episode eight. Episode eight, not episode nine. Did I yes. say? Oh, sorry. With special I was guest Troy eight, Baker. Episode eight. Special guest Troy Barker. <laughs> what are you reaching I'm for? Just Kyle? raising my raising my hand. I oh, did not Kyle? like this yes. episode. I did. You didn't not like this episode. episode. Tell, tell I did not like tell this episode. Tell us why. So we can tell you you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I like I I mean, I like parts of this episode. One, the biggest thing for me was the character of uh what's his name? David? David. 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 Um, the character of David. I did not buy the actor being like the menacing leader of this group of unintentional cannibals. In the game, that part is played by um Nathan uh or not Nathan Fillion. Uh, who plays Nathan Drake? Nathan Fielder. Nathan Fielder. Fiel- yeah, Nathan Fielder. He got really good grades. Oh, Nolan North. Um, Nolan North. I knew it was an That's an, Nolan an, North. I don't think I yeah. realized that. Yeah, it's Nolan North in the game and he he does like this kind of crazy like not southern draw, but it just adds like, like an edge voice. an edge to the character that this guy just kept reminding me of like a creepy youth group pastor way past his prime. Um, perfect though. Perfect. <laughs> but it didn't work for me as much as it did in the game. And I just didn't buy I, I don't think that that guy was as per, gave as good a performance as Nolan North did in the video game. And that lessened the experience overall for me. Also, Troy Baker's character <laughs> Good. For all for the amount that they hyped him up, I was expecting more. But like, yeah, he's mm-hmm. fine. Like, yeah. he was he was good. I just think um, Troy Baker always looks like Troy Baker, and yeah. that oh, yeah. distracts me. But yeah. I think he's a fine. I, obviously, he's a fine. Oh actor. yeah. But in this in yeah. this one, it took me a bit because the makeup and the costume and 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 his acting, I was like, is that him? Like, I couldn't quite tell at the beginning because he had the beanie That's on true. and he was I just. Uh, him. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. He thought he was. I thought he was. He was good. He was. So he didn't have a ton I, of screen time. But I agree with you, Kyle. I. I'm in the air between performances. There's some of the lines that I think the guy in the show did really well, like the campfire scene where he's just like, oh, I can prove it to you. And then he's like, like the Providence thing of like, oh, one of my men and all that sort of stuff like that scene. I thought he nailed. And then obviously Nolan North is great. But my problem with the game is you have to f- there's a mini horde mode chapter yeah. where you have to fight off enemies with David. I and- actually like that part <laughs> because no. It's, it's like trial by fire, game. but yeah, it's a good part of the game. But in reality, David would have just shot Ellie once he had a gun again and then gotten out of there. But they also, I understand he wants his, his obsession with finding Joel as well is is keeping him from well, doing that. But, uh, um, and it was, it was the same thing in the game where like he thought of Ellie as his equal, which yeah. I, I also kind That's of didn't weird, buy man. at all. Like I and, and it's the same thing in the show where he's like, finally, I found someone who's like me. And I'm like, she's <laughs> not story. like you this at all. Like, what are you, yeah, yeah, this is why. <laughs> she's cr- what? It, it's, it's just it, it to me. It read as a moment of I didn't buy it as him genuinely saying that is you're going to be my equal. I read it as you're going to be my queen. I'm going to wife the shit out of you. OK. Yeah. And so it was more of seduction rather than like. I think empathy. maybe maybe he overdid it on the creepy factor in the show, and that sort of overrode. It's less overt. Like, in the game. yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's why I like the performance in the game so much better. Is it's like it's there's like slow creeping moments that reveal like that reveal yeah. in the game is very much the same as it is in the show, where he's like, 
I know who you are and what you did. But in the game, it comes right after they've just defended and beaten all these infected. And they're like, True. they're like happy. Like there's, there's this elation of like, we got through this. And yeah, then they're like sitting down and moment. he's like, he's like, I know who you are. And, and it's this big reveal. She backs up. Um, and in the show, it was just like, it was so short. And I, I, I don't know. I, it was one of, one of those things I, where I think the game managed that section better as far as emotional um, manipulation and the, the reveals for everything. But I think the show, again, if you didn't play that part of the game, probably reads pretty well. Is, is, yeah, is it, that... and, and I was going to say, without I know absolutely nothing about David. That was one of the things about the game that I knew nothing about. So I didn't have any of that context. And I think David came off very well in this you know he came off as that right moment of of like i can be inspirational but once i once i've inspired you and gained your trust then i'm going to start to manipulate you and so all of those scenes played really well for me and i i found david to be a like like a very interesting character and, and i think i think the slow reveal of like like you know the lady at the beginning she's like when are we gonna bury dad you know my dad's dead and he's like it's okay and you're like okay she's like you know forgetting that and then there's like two or three more pieces of information that drop before you're like oh fuck they ate him. that's the guy they killed at the last one and that yeah. drops very well i don't want to say it's better than the game because i don't know the problem i have with this fucking episode though which is that by the end of it i was laughing this turned into a comedy and the reason why it turned into a comedy was because if you take if you take who is David, right, David, beginning of the episode, David is a pastor. Then he's a leader and then he's like a bully and then he's like uh, a pedophile and then he's a cannibal and then he's a rapist. Like they just can't be like, you don't hate this guy yet. Well, now he's going to fucking rape her. And it's just like. Why are you building up this character so much? Like it literally just being like, take off the mask. You don't hate me yet. Here's another awful character of me. And, it, and I started laughing. I literally just started laughing. It felt like episode one, scene one of Chernobyl, when the reactor blows up and you're supposed to be very serious and tense, but you can't stop fucking laughing at this office comedy because there's a net <laughs> crazy boss yelling at his underlings. And it's just like, and he's throwing manuals at him and being like, just push the fucking lever. And it's, it felt like the same thing where it was so over the top. It was accidentally comedic. And it was just very funny to me because that's the same fucking problem I had with Chernobyl. And I was I'll, like, you did I'll it again. Say, I, I didn't have that problem with Chernobyl at all. Nor I did think I. Chernobyl is like perfect, so it's it's funny. It's but it, funny. it is it does have. <laughs> I, I would say that it has is it's darkly comedic. It's not. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. There are yeah, 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 yeah. of dark comedy. In I would say unintentionally though, there are parts of it where it's funny that it is not intending to be, and and that's the thing with David was they just kept they kept being like, oh, it's not bad enough that he's a bully. It's not bad enough that he's eating more food than everybody else and and mistreating them. It's like, no, we need to start piling can on we, this other bad stuff on top of them. Can we talk about like, the noise of people scraping their bowls in that oh, scene? Yeah. was like, I have surround yeah. sound, and I was like, am I at a summer camp right now? Like, it was <laughs> very <laughs> weird. It was great. <laughs> they, um, uh, I think they did a really good job, like, showing, uh, or sorry, a better job in the game of building him up the way you're saying in the show that they quickly revealed the masks. So like, I think I flipped back on your side, Kyle with the game being better because like, it's just one guy who's lo I think when he's locking Ellie up says, Oh, it's David's latest pet. Yeah. Like yeah, it's yeah, yeah, subtle yeah. like that. It's not like, Oh, it's David's latest kid. Cause he's a kitty toucher and he loves kids yeah. and you're going to be his new queen. Like it's not like as open as, as the show, but it's, it's like it's, made it a little bit more like, is this guy going to do this or is he just like a suit trying to manipulate her and scare her like sort of thing? Yeah. It's way more subtle. And again, n not so much pacing, but just like giving those, those scenes, the time they need to breathe and sort of marinate in a, in a, in a audience or a gamer's viewpoint, I think, does the show dirty sometimes. And um, this is actually one of the points that we we were talking about before we decided to do this uh, as an episode of Local Chat was we were interested in seeing what's the difference between people who have played the game and know what's going to happen and people seeing this happen either for the first time, for the most part, if you played a little bit of the game or not, you know, not play the game at all. So I'm happy that it landed for 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 you, Ian. Um, Jake, had you, you, you knew what was going to happen going into this episode? Yeah, too? yeah. There were, there's like the middle chunk of the last of us. That's like a blank void in my brain. Um, but the, the beginning and the end were parts that are, are pretty solid in there. And so, yeah, I remembered 
like when David appeared on screen, I'm like, that's the weird cannibal guy. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was mostly ambivalent towards this episode, as I was to most of the episodes. I think this was this was a very middle of the road show for me uh, uh, on the whole. But um, yeah, yeah. So I, I had no extreme feelings one way or the other about this episode. Yeah, I um, my my dad, I got him to watch the first two episodes and he liked it. And I was worried that if I don't actually know if he watched the third episode or not. So I kind of wanted to ask him if he watched the rest of the show. And I'm I'm anticipating hearing him say I stopped out of the third episode because of the gaze. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I really would like to to hear more perspectives on people who hadn't played the game and and what they thought of this episode. So, yeah, mm. well, uh, most people have bad taste, so they probably loved it. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the final episode. Look for the light. Uh, a pregnant Anna places her trust in a lifelong friend. Later, Ugh. Joel and Ellie near the end of their journey. Special guest um, star, Ashley Johnson. Ashley, Ashley Johnson, Johnson up front. From the legend of birth. Vox Machina. That was fucking pointless because it's it's retconning a lot. of. I don't want to say retconning, but like up to this point, you're just like, Ellie got bit. For some reason, she didn't get it's, infected. It's, That's it's, interesting. It's blade. It's Blade. <laughs> yeah. And now you're like, I didn't need an explanation for this. Where's and also, Snipes? why did you bring back the the the, the two dimensional uh, Marlene character? Like, you know, it's like, OK, whatever. I think to remind you that she's there so she's that she there. doesn't pop yeah. up at the end yeah. of the show. She's still away, surprised like, me at the end of the show. Fly. I thought she died in the first episode. She was gut shot and she had like one person with her and she's like, I don't know how to get out of here. And I, I just <laughs> assumed she was dead. She's always yeah. got people dying for her. I, I do think they kind of did Marlene a disservice by cutting her so much in the beginning because she's a significant part of the, the last episode as far as yeah. what, what happens with Joel and Ellie and what she sort of is the the checkpoint for um also i've met merle dandridge uh, who is a, a wonderful human being and she performed on broadway she's got a great singing voice um i've met her talked to her for a few minutes she's wonderful and she also plays alex in the half-life series so yes um, and also she great. plays marlene in the game yes Same yeah yeah this. yeah uh which is really cool i like that um yeah i think uh the whole opening was just weird i think along the lines of ellie was special yeah. and now we're kind of fig but also leads to me to the fact that ellie is immune marlene knows this now she was also there when ellie was born she oh, knew that so there was an infected yeah. in the room beforehand why haven't you been experimenting on pregnant women yes. for the past like year yes. or whatever <laughs> and killing people if you're okay with killing this little girl well but i don't i don't think she knew she was well, it, it, it just doesn't make it, any fucking sense because all because those years is, she didn't know it wasn't yeah, until the mall but, thing yeah yeah but at the same time she said like a cutter and then but it's also like the way the mall thing doesn't end in my head i'm going okay so marlene shows up and she finds ellie and this other person they're both bit one of them turns you know it's the person who's the firefly she's checking up on her she has to kill the firefly all of a sudden this other person's not turning and that's when she comes into to ellie and it's 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 just like conflicting fucking storylines that are overlapping in a way where it's like pick fucking one and have that be the story you don't need to overcomplicate it and and that's what they did they overcomplicated it just to, just to try and build up characters and moments i guess that never fucking come yeah. and it's just like what do like, you do? In, well, i didn't know game... if maybe it was also written specifically so that they could get ashley johnson into the show but i yeah. I, I don't know she I think it anybody. might have yeah. been she I think she would have been a better choice for Melanie Linsky's character. Yeah, if, if perfectly oh, honest. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that would have been a that. great, a great swap. Um, I, and just I'm okay hearing... with including her. Sorry. Yeah. Just to quickly. say, I'm OK with including her because Mar Mar Marlene mentions her in the game. And I, I can't remember if she mentions her at the hospital in the show as well. But she's like, I knew Ellie's mother. This decision is hard for me as it is for you. But like yeah. they could have just shown that opening and uh somehow her acquiring ellie of baby means but the whole like the zombie <laughs> coming in like i wasn't bit blah, 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 like clearly yeah, pacing yeah, it yeah. out also why was there nothing in the woods and they were chasing her and trying to I don't like know. what was that and like, also, i didn't explain she, that so i was just like I, what is happening i don't i don't understand why it was I, I guess it was because she was pregnant and she couldn't hold back her like gasps or anything but she was like pretty far into the house like how would that thing have heard her in from the outside i don't know it was very it was very, it was very it was very yeah I don't know. 
I, um, I didn't realize. Weird. You, so you're saying part of that is in the game, in the game, Marlene's like, I knew your mom, et cetera. She, she mentions it. Yeah. So at the end, Ugh. when she's like, Joel's like, how could you do this to a little girl? And she says, don't you say that to me. I, her mother was my best friend sort of thing. that's, that's yeah. not what she says so, something oh, like that. so that's where it comes from because for me i'm like just rip that whole fucking thing out marlene doesn't know her mom she just ran into her at the mall and she and noticed that she didn't turn like and then get rid of the mom segment so uh, that means i can't blame the show writers completely they're they're trying to tease something out from the game okay but still it didn't need to be there didn't yeah, need to be there. yeah it was it was i don't know it just felt unnecessary to me, like, yeah, yeah. just the retconning stuff. I guess not retconning, but well, we could have con- five more minutes it, yeah. somewhere else in the episode because yeah. it doesn't it yeah. doesn't add anything either, yeah. aside yeah. from turning yeah. Ellie into Blade. Yeah, well, and and it cuts from that scene to Ellie sitting on the back of a truck. And I'm like, she doesn't know any of this. Like, yeah, like, it did have it, an it implication, was... especially at the, the early parts where she's kind of like distant with Joel. And it's it's like the filmmake, the language of the filmmaking is implying that something's on her mind something's weighing on her and yeah i too was like she is she thinking about well yeah. and in her mom in, who she in the, never knew in the game it literally smash cuts from she's hacking away at david to joel wrapping his arms around her and like get, she's still going and he's like pulling yeah, her back and then he he says like oh baby girl and then it just smash cuts to seattle or uh, salt lake city yeah and then she's quiet and you notice it and you're like oh she's still thinking about shit that mm-hmm. in my That's life cleaner. just happened like two seconds ago yeah but in oh, the in wait. the show the, is the... that is that why she's quiet in the show because they never yeah. really explained it in the show i thought she right. was quiet a little bit a yeah. little bit because of that but i thought because she was like i, I don't want to leave joel like joel's gonna dump it's, me yeah, off it's the end of the you know, it's, like... it's not clear yeah but it's, also it's... In, the, in the game he's like it, that section in the game is great because you have this little open world area not really but you're just that section of highway and you're going through the cars and rvs and picking stuff out and you're like oh ellie here's a guitar there's like ellie are you listening to me where in the show they were like ellie here's a guitar ellie are you listening to me like it compounded it so quickly where in the game she's distant over a couple different things and then he's like hey what's wrong where in the in the show it's just one thing and he's just like are you okay it's like yeah he turns he turns into a helicopter parent which honestly a little bit i i am okay within the show because the way that makes sense the way it it changes throughout the episode and goes at the end i'm like hey maybe joel's a bad person again (laughs) because of how this thing goes and maybe we should maybe we should uh talk about that um i don't really know where to to start yeah Yeah, who fucking cares about the giraffe it's a real giraffe Um, let well, me put it this way. It was a real well, giraffe for the close-ups. Close ups. I've yeah. seen the I've seen the screeners yeah. and it's what's, not all real. What's <laughs> different between <laughs> the game? What's different between the hospital scenes in the game and the the show? Let me let me kick it off that way. Um there's no if I remember correctly, I could be misremembering this completely. There's no music in the hospital show. Or in, I the, don't in, in, in the hospital part. There okay. might be, it might be subtle, but it's, it's so. long. Like you have to fight your way through the hospital. There's a, t- it's the hardest part of the game, yeah. in my opinion, because there's just like wave after not, it feels like there's just an endless sort of stream of guys coming and you're just slowly making your way towards the the surgical center. And in the show, they made a really, I'll, I'll call it interesting. I don't, I didn't like it, but it was an interesting choice to just sort of go into Joel's head and you get that sort of rage mode, single minded, like no emotion. We're just I'm I'm yeah. working my way, cutting, cutting down these people. Um, but it, it just didn't that the the way the game makes you literally fight through that. And and the time you I mean, it's probably a good 30 minute section of the game where you're just cover to cover, shooting people, taking people down, stealthing it. It feels earned when you finally arrive there, like you've gone through the 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 trials and tribulations of everything in the show. It was just like, yeah, there's like t- eight guys, maybe like maybe nine. And well, he and just mows them down into and like a montage. Yeah. Almost. It's really, yeah. it's really like, weird. I thought I was it's... expecting knowing that that was coming. I was expecting from the first episode for there to be like, if there was a time when this show were to do a really tasteful one yeah, that yes. would be it. Yes. I, I wrote that in my notes for the last episode. Cause I watched it again today. Um, and just 
I didn't like the execution really of it at it. all. Yeah. And like, it's, I feel they, like they doing like the cutaways to just like, you know, objects on the floor and, and yeah, yeah. having it be a lot of the sound is pretty <laughs> muted. Yeah. It's um, awful. And in the background, <laughs> yeah. see where he picks up the pistol and he's just like, <laughs> yeah, he, he's just like, oh, I got it now. Also, he I, left that guy, that guy's like M4 on the stairs. I was like, why did you take the crappy like duct taped gun when the guy's got a perfectly good M4 just sitting on the stair? I don't know. I, I, so, so, they took so, him, uh, no, I'm going. No, uh, I was just going to say they took a section of a video game where you yes. don't think about a video game, how many people you're killing, and then yes. put it into a show where I think they could have come up with a creative way where Joel kills maybe one or two people, kills obviously kills the doctor because he has to, and then gets Ellie and gets out. with Still yes. make him a, psych, a bit of a psychopath, but not as cold and calculated because he is not a video game character someone else yes. is controlling, just shooting all the random people. It, it should have been a more thought-out scene that him going to save Ellie. I'm okay with the stairwell fight. Get out of the stairwell, sneak over to pediatrics, kill one or two people, kill the doctor, get Ellie. Uh, I think yes. that would have played better. I, I, I think to your point, Will, that's, that's almost exactly what I was going to say, because yes. I, I, Kyle and Jake, I think your criticisms are fair, but my problem was not with how this was shot. It's that the entire fucking series up to this is like every encounter with a human being, just one fucking person infected or not, is terrifying because you don't know their intentions. You don't know. You you have shitty equipment. They have shitty equipment. You're in a bad situation. And now all of a sudden, uh, Joel turns into fucking Joel Wick and he's just like, sure, I'll fucking clear this hospital of like heavily armed, fully automatic individuals. I would have not just felt completely over the top and just not realistic within the world of the show. I would have bought it more. I would have been willing to buy what they did more if they had if they had executed it differently. Like I, I do. they. It's funny. There's the whoever put the article at the bottom of the notes right here where it says the last of us finale writers on uh, Joel's John Wick moment. It didn't feel like a John like J John Wick obviously is very specific with how it's shot and like gun and stuff. I'm not saying they should do that, but I do think the tension of having a one like Jake should Jake mm -hmm. suggested would have added a lot to the tension that the rest of the show seemed to put on those encounters. And I'm not saying you need to have more guys or, 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 you know, it, it's a, it's a, a problem of numbers. It's a problem of building the tension. proper amount of tension at the right moment and having it, having it break during the climax of, of the episode and the show. And it just didn't, it just didn't work for me. And again, yeah. maybe it's, maybe it's because I knew exactly what was going to happen, but I was like, this is, different like i just didn't it just didn't land for me and i i do i do think that the one would have a, a one would have helped to ian's point as well even if they had like at the beginning or at the beginning there's a bumper sticker on tommy's truck that says you know desert storm veteran or whatever and then joel i think mentions to ellie that tommy was in desert storm if they had just shoehorned in that joel had also been in desert storm or yeah. had some sort of like tactical Extra, awareness yeah, tactical that's training gives yeah. him an advantage over, you know, like a random raid. Then it would have been, then, yeah, like, like he well, he's a contractor a little bit more he knew where the walls were. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he knew he could shoot through some drywall, but he needed to not hit studs and stuff. If he had had a nail gun. <laughs> yeah. Which, or him, like, it's, it's just surprising his way through it would have even been better. Than exactly. The, yeah. The or even getting like, like wounded, but he fucking greased his way through that. Um, yeah. and, and so, which is a shame because I feel like this is a key character moment for him. You know, we talked about, um, episode seven being this moment for me where I was like, Oh, now I'm finally empathizing with Ellie and, and starting to, to like realize depth to her character. Episode nine was when I started to realize that depth with Joel, where I was like, you know, okay, they spent eight fucking episodes building his relationship with Ellie and being like, look, he's got a dead daughter. Here's a new daughter. What's going to happen? And it's like attachment. Who would have fucking guessed it? But episode nine is Joel being like, I'm going to turn into a fucking helicopter parent. I'm going to turn into a fucking violent helicopter parent that lies to his kid. And just to skip ahead a little bit, that makes the ending so much fucking better where Joel doesn't die. And instead he just lies to her face and she's like, OK, and you're not really sure if she really believes him or if she's just like, this is the choice I have to make because because I love Joel and he protects me. So I have to be OK with how he behaves in this way. And I'm like fucking hyped now a little bit for season two because I'm like they turned Joel into a fucking crazy helicopter parents killer psychopath. And I'm like, now I'm finally fucking interested in Joel and Ellie. 
I know? have I mean one one specific issue with the end is that they cut too early. She yes. says that final line and it just smashes to oh, credit. I love that. I no, love that because I, I was, waiting, like, I was in, waiting for him to die. I was waiting for him to die. I think I think they knew everybody was waiting for him to die. And so cutting it is just like fuck no, you. No, no, no. I mean, I, you can still cut it there, but just give it like. A I need like two beat. more seconds. Like, yeah, just, like just two more and, seconds. And on maybe her. even yeah. like cut back to him yeah. and then cut back to her, so you can have that moment, like you said, where she, you can realize that she's like, does she not believe him? Does she believe him? And then flip to him, like, does does he know that she knows that he's lying? Just oh. like just a just a beat or two more, and then cut to credits. Not a whole extra scene or anything. Just. A Breath. I don't I don't want to belabor the point, but I actually watched right before this episode, I watched the the video game ending and then rewatched the very like both both endings from the show and the game. I watched basically one right after another. And they're basically exactly the same, other than the show, um, the lighting is way darker, and there's a there's a glint in Ellie's eyes in the game that it it's like one of the most realistic expressions I've ever seen in a video game character, even in the non remastered version, like in, in the original PS3 version, there's an expression that they somehow managed to get on Ellie's face in the game that speaks volumes. Like it just, mm -hmm. it, you can see the conflict literally in her eyes. She, they're shifting back and forth. She is exactly what Ian said. You don't know if she's thinking, I believe him or I have to believe him in order to keep living. And, and to survive, and this is just something I'm gonna have to live with. In the show, it's actually framed slightly differently, and I don't like the way they, f like physically framed the camera differently. Um, and it's a lot darker, and the, there's like no glint in her eyes. Like it's really kind of dim. And I, I just, I wanted that sort of visual impact to coincide with the choice that she makes. And, and you know, she says, okay. And, it just didn't hit as much. And I, I do think that to Jake's point, I specifically said when I was talking about the show um, on Twitter uh, and in my notes, I was like, it it needed to breathe more, even if it was just a beat or like a like another second and a half of just holding on these people. And it, it felt like the entire episode, but especially the ending just felt a little a little too rushed. And I I I, I don't know if that's maybe because. Neil Druckmann was an executive producer and he did co-write the last episode with Craig Mazin. And maybe he was like, this is, here's what we did in the game. And Craig Mazin was like, okay, we'll just do this. And they talked about in the article, the director of the episode shot a little bit more of, um, uh, ambiguous ending where Ellie actually walks off and it lingers on her, like walking off towards, towards the town. And then it cuts. And they were like, that's actually really beautiful. And and they said a lot of people on on set and when they were editing it, a lot of people liked it, but they were like, let's just stick to the game. And part of me wishes it's like, if you didn't let the original ending that you chose from the game in the show breathe enough, do something different or, mm -hmm. or change it up a little bit more just to just to I don't know, just to to give it more time. And and I think that's that's what I wanted the ending to be. And it just didn't have that emotional heft to it that I really wanted. Sorry, that was a very long explanation, but uh, I can see that. Yeah. Um. Well, that's the show. Final thoughts <laughs> on it, everybody. Has your fruit changed? Has your fruit become tastier? Is your mouth still on fire? I think my my watermelon is a little uh, a little unripened after talking about the well, show. It's not right. it's not quite that summer fresh watermelon. It's like a little bit a little bit too green. Yep. I think this is a, a a solidly mostly competently made show from top to bottom, but it's if you've played the video game, there's not really going to be a lot of meat on the skeleton of this thing for you to bite into apart from those two flashback episodes. Um I don't know anything about uh Last of Us Part 2. But I think they've already said that it's going to be two seasons. Or they want yeah, it to be two seasons. I, I think so. Which Last of Us Part 2 is also an ex much... It's, it's very like long. Twice as long. Yeah. It's so long. I think so I, I just thought it was fine. Can I, can I ask you a question? Are you guys going to watch season two? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Watch season two. I don't know that I am. Because I like even even when I was enjoying that show, that is still a very... It's kind of the criticisms I, I heard people say about Last of Us Part Two, which is like, this is very depressing. And even though it's great, it is 
a hard thing to watch and stomach because if if it works and you're emotionally invested in it then you just become horribly depressed and that's kind of like last of us part one it was either uh this is mediocre and i'm not enjoying this or i am invested in this but it's also very depressing and so i'm not sure that i want more of that quality roller coaster in season two Quite yeah. Oh, it's it's entirely possible that I'll get a couple episodes into season two That's and true. feel that exact same way because I've stopped. I stopped heckin' Stranger Things season four because I didn't like the characters that were bullying Eleven, and I'm like, I just don't want to watch this. Good for you. Good but, for you. <laughs> um. So yeah, maybe I'll get. I'll be like, this is too sad. I um, I, I will say as as far as the games are concerned, I said at the beginning I never played two. I've watched two to to from beginning to end um i don't like neil Druckmann's writing as much as i i did in the first game um i think it was i think the writing in the first game was offset by a lot of other creative people at naughty dog uh one of them being uh who was the the co-producer on the last of us who left naughty dog amy um, henning not or... amy henning um no. it's it's another another guy i can't remember his name um, he, I think, was a, a really nice kind of foil to Neil Druckmann's writing. Um, he left the studio, so Neil Druckmann, I think, is solo writing credit on The Last of Us Part Two, and he really has a problem with like, like depression porn, where he just keeps making things mm, darker and yeah. darker and <laughs> darker to the point where it's overwhelming how like how dour and dark and depressing and sad these people's lives get and i get that it's the apocalypse but it's like he he fixates on that in his writing so much for for this series obviously there's not that much of that in like the uncharted series but um i i do think it's a problem of it's like the george lucas problem of you just have people keep saying yes to whatever it is you do it and, and there's yeah it, it rhymes it's like poetry um it's like really sad poetry um yeah but i uh i don't i don't think season two of the last of us the tv show it's it's gonna have the reception that the game had which was critics really loved it and people who aren't critics were like split more so than i think the first the first game did and obviously Man. there's there's a lot of political stuff that hap that happened along that the the game leaked a huge spoiler for the for the second part like a week before it released or two weeks before it released um so there's a lot of contention with stuff like that but i do think the tv show if it sticks to the story that they told in the game i don't i, I don't I, i'm fully expecting there to be a drop off in viewership i i don't know because one of the because we just we just talked about how like solid 7 season one was and that shit is pulling crazy fucking numbers across the board like yeah so many numbers that they're that is not just gamers that is a lot of normal fucking people loving last of us and if if they are willing to swallow that that quality and rave about it then well yeah but uh, how many seasons of young sheldon are there but i like i, 10. I also think lot. i also think there are people I, again i have I have not I've the only person I've talked to the show about has been my dad and I don't even know if he watched past the second episode. I know for a fact that there are people who told their parents or their friends to only watch the first season of the show. And they're mm. like they're going to make a second season but it's going to be really bad. Mm. Don't bother. Weird. And that's yeah, I, I know. And people they're stupid, but I, uh, I just want to say like you guys mentioned touching on the like depression stuff and all that. Made me realize why I think I like these games so much, which is I don't. You didn't finish the second one. Uh, you didn't finish playing the second one, though, because you're depressed. Yeah. You said it was too depressing. No, 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 no. I stopped playing it, and it, and I don't remember where. I, I don't want to play 14 hours to get back to where I was. Um, I um, like because I don't experience that very often. So playing these games, feelings, emotions, puts me well, no depression mostly or like sadness. Um, so like putting it into that, like, I just mean, I don't have like depression or anything. I, so playing brag. these games is a good way to like express that <laughs> yeah. feeling. All right, you out of here. Humble brag. Well, I, well, how was I supposed to say it? I'm sorry. I'm a jubilant person. Um, so like, it's neat. And, uh, it, it, after playing through the entire first game, uh, I'm probably going to pick up the second game now and play through it again. 
Yeah, oh, fuck off. Um, let, so, so just close out this conversation. Let's talk about what we do want from season two that would make you want to watch it. And honestly, there's one thing, which is if through previews or them saying it or whatever, if they came out and they said, look, we're not taking anything from the games anymore. We're doing everything completely new and it's more micro stories. I would 100% be in for season two yeah. because that's what worked in the first game was them expanding stuff and telling micro stories. That's what worked incredibly well. So if they just focused on that, that would be a lot better. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I mean, I would love more of like anthology type stories. Um, and if you want to, like I said earlier, if you want to keep the Joel and Ellie stuff as like episodic bookends, whatever. But yeah, just yeah, more I think, stories. I, th- I mean, just from a structure standpoint with part two, that is technically going to happen because the story is very much split. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so... Okay. It, it's not it's not going to be like new person, new person, new person, new person for every every episode. But there is sort of the the dueling parallel timelines kind of thing. Um, it's also extremely nonlinear. The the second game, like mm, it jumps yeah. way more than the first game does. So um, I think that's sort of inherent in, in the story. But yeah, I mean, okay. I want I want more bottle episodes. I want more episode threes and episode uh, sevens even though I didn't care for episode seven that much, but I, I still thought it was fresh and it was nice, but I'll, I'll watch season two when it comes out and we'll, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I feel like, I feel like Madsen is he's, he's in my head. He's kind of becoming like, um, Zack Snyder where it's like fantastic directing cinematography. Don't let him touch the fucking script at all. Just don't let him touch it. <laughs> and with Matson, it's like there's there are particular types of stories and story beats, etc. Structures that he writes very well. But then there's others like the main fucking characters that he does not. And it's just like, uh, you know, like like get him more support in the areas where he needs help. And maybe I'll come back for season. I, two. I also think that's you can't put all of that on Craig Mason because Neil Druckmann is right alongside him being like, hey. I'm your Bible. Like, I, yeah. you, like listen to me yeah. because I'm an executive producer on the show and I Burn created the, the game. And I think and... he co-wrote the first episode and as well as the last episode. Yeah. yeah. So but he's I've the heard, problem then. I have heard like. through the grapevine that the Borderlands script is really good. <laughs> <laughs> With Kate Blanchett? Through the grapevine. Yeah, the wow. Eli Roth Borderlands movie. I don't movie know. That Craig I mean, that, we're finally going to have a good D&D movie in a couple weeks. So I'm excited. I, who knows? You know, I've heard from four people now that that movie is incredible. So yeah. it's the same guys uh, who did Game Night. So I'm down. Yeah, I've got tickets on Sunday. I'm seeing it early. That's so awesome. I'm ready. Oh, see it. Um, folks, gentlemen, Hi. thank you so much for being here. That was fun. It was fun yeah, to talk about good. a show and not yell at each other. Uh, and it was fun. it's fun to get sad sometimes. I learned. Um, I'm gonna hit this outro <laughs> button. See if I'm just kidding. You fucking, fucking elitist. <laughs> um, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I don't get depressed. <laughs> uh, Pixel. I I don't mean it like that. I just mean what's I don't deal with. Question? What's wrong? What are tears? I've never experienced I that. No, I experience emotion. Jesus. It's not the also, news. I did look it up. The name of the episode is Please Hold to My Hand I, on I did HBO.com. That's so, super weird. You. It is. I don't know what that means. I wonder Folks, if that's from You can find it. all of our content on subpixelfilms.com. Um, go check that out. Uh, Jake, Kyle, Ian joined me this week, episode 113. I hope everyone enjoyed it. We went a little bit long, but we'll see you all next week. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Anything else anyone wants to say? No. Uh, see you on, on Saturday. The we got the Yeti. We'll see you all on Saturday. Bye, everyone. Bye.